Hello YouTube. So um, I just finished off a long review of uh, three very strong French rums. Uh, my felt my felt still feeling is pretty strong though, so I thought I would um, dash off a quick review of something that has already been reviewed a couple of times on YouTube already. Um, so you're probably not even watching this because I've probably been defeated um, by the search algorithms. Uh, in particular, the, the Whiskey Tribe guys have done one of this. Uh, I never really find their stuff that helpful. It's a little too broy for me, so I thought I would um, do one of my own. This is, uh, you know, just, you know, quickie, quick and for fun. Um, since you're not watching anyways. Um, so this is Old Potre Potrero. Uh, straight rye whiskey uh, from the Hoteling & Co. Company. Um, who the hell is, is Hoteling & Co.? Well, if, uh, uh, if you've never heard of them before, there's a reason for that. They used to be called Anchor Distilling. They were the uh, distilling arm of the uh, Anchor Brewing Company. And when they were bought out a couple of years ago by Sapporo, um, the, uh, it basically left the, uh, the distilling arm in, in the wings and they had to change their, night, their name. So now they are a hoteling. And now you know um, uh, what else? Uh, interesting distillery, the, uh, the old Anchor guys. They were not in the first generation of sort of new craft distillers. That was probably the, um, uh, uh, you know, um, the folks in, oh, what, what the hell is the, the folks in Oregon? Um, Clear Creek and a couple of other folks like that um, started out in the 80s. Uh, and they're, but they're also not the second, really the second generation, which only really came around, you know, uh, after the 2000s or so. Um, this, so they're sort of generation one and a half of, of uh, American distilling. They started out in the 90s as sort of just a, with a heavy focus on pot distilling. That's just, you know, they make pot distillate and that's how they roll. And I, am, I support that. The Old Potrero series is interesting because you will notice it says straight rye whiskey, but it also says way up in the corner there, single malt. Um, now, how can you do that? Um, it's either a rye or, or a malt. What is, uh, you, you know, it's, it's like being, you know, um, uh, pregnant and unpregnant at the same time. Uh, well, uh, the trick is this is if this is 100% rye, it is a 100% rye malt. So all the rye going into this uh, has been malted. So they've sprinkled some water over it and um, uh, then then got to germinate and then dried it out before they distilled it, which makes it totally different from um, most of the rye you can buy because most of the rye you can buy, even if it's 100% rye, right? Most of that is going to be unmalted. It's still going to be green. Um, this particular one uh, was aged four years and six months in charred uh, new American oak barrels. They also they did years ago a, a, a um, uh, 18th century style American whiskey, which is really good, where they only use toasted barrels. They're going to actually call it a rye legally. Um, this particular barrel was a pick for, by Binnie's. I'm doing a lot of Binnie's picks recently because they're kind of the only game in town here in Chicago, to be honest. Um, and it is bottled at 63.72% alcohol. All right, so um, let's get into this bad boy. Four, four and a half year old uh, malt rye whiskey. Um, so immediately you see the rye and you're expecting, you know, um, uh, maybe some floral notes, maybe uh, some green notes, maybe some asparagus, dillweed in there, maybe some pickle. Absolutely none of that. Nothing like that. Um, totally different from that. Um, this is, you know, MGP is over here. This is way over in another universe. Um, it's, it, it is a little bit floral, actually, but that's about the only... You know, point of similarity that for between this and every other rye you can think of. It really smells like a collision, you know, like a ten car pile up between, uh, like Alsatian eau de vie, like um, you know, fruit distillate. Um, all of them, just you know, um, every single Alsatian fruit distillate you can think of colliding with hardcore American oak. So you're getting 
the experience of nosing this is just experience, the experience of nosing that collision. So on the one hand, it's, it's you know, pear brandy, frambois, um, cherry brandy, grape brandy. There's a little, um, that floral note is really not flowers. It's really more sort of um, Blanche Armagnac. Um, unaged grape brandy. Um, but then beyond that, you're getting like, Tons of coconut, caramel, um, well, not, not caramel, I'm going to back, back that up. Confectioner's fudge, unchocolated fudge. Um, vanilla beans, some candy ginger, you know, the stuff you get in the, in the bag at Trader Joe's and it's like, it's like six bucks. Um, is it six bucks? I can't even remember. It doesn't matter. Um, tons of vanilla, tons of coconut. Um, there is cherry in there, but it's not sort of woody cherry. It's more, it's more like uh, cherry eau de vie. Um, and then there's just stewed breakfast tea, stewed English breakfast tea all day long. Some toasted marshmallows. Um, and some graham crackers to go along with your toasted marshmallows. Very different, very different nose from... Um, any other American whiskey I can think of, but it works uh, really nicely. There's a, there's like a, that fudge thing. It's like, um, it's fudgy, but it's, it's kind of dirty in that way that, that like peated um, mainland scotches can get dirty. There's, it's like, it's fudge, but you're covering your fudge up in like, you know, dirt and earth and like uh um, you know, dry leaves, more just fruit spirit, a little fruit cake in there too. So it's Christmas time and everyone is, you know, drinking eau de vie and eating fruit cake on the palate. Oh. That 64% alcohol just kicked me in the teeth a little bit, but it's nice. I like it. Um, character uh, on the palate really follows from the nose. Um, this is not an old whiskey, but it's acting older than it's four years. This is um, four years going on six, seven. Uh, it's reaching kind of further back in my palate than I expect a four year old to do, to do. So I'm wondering if they're using smaller barrels or anything to any other tricks on this. Not that I'm noticing any harshness, um, it's really, you know, again, we're getting pear, cherry, um, raspberries, uh, all the berries, uh, unaged grape brandy, again, Blanche Armagnac, but then you cover, take all of that and you just cover it in like oaky syrupy sauce. You throw on some black tea, more black tea leaves than actual black tea. Um, the set, that confectioner's fudge again. Um, um, like a, like something pastry like, like a chocolate, chocolate croissant. Um, kind of note. Uh, part of me wants to say like like a croissant with a more fruit filling than chocolate, but no, there's this isn't like like uh, preserves fruity. This is re really more distillate fruity. Um, some ice cream, like vanilla ice cream. Mm. Coconut, coconut shavings, like toasted up a little bit. And, um, and like a cherry wood smoke kind of thing. So you're really at a barbecue where someone really likes cher cherry wood smoke, that's coming through. And even there's like a little bit of a, of a, orange peel, um, like a really like a blood orange note kind of running through this, but it's not actual run or blood orange. It really feels like someone put like a shot of, of bourbon aged, um, rum agricole. So like that, uh, you know, like take some rum JM that's been aging for a couple of years has, you know, very bourbony, but has that blood orange note, throw a little bit of that in there. Um, More tea leaves, 
candy ginger again, white pepper, long finish on the peppery tea leaf, um, fruit eau de vie note going way back in my mouth. Um, very impressive, very well made. But again, you know, totally different from any other rye you're going to be able to buy on the market that I know of, unless somebody else, somebody else has to be doing rye malt, right? That, that's happening, right? I don't know. I, I don't make me do the research. So I'm going to add some water to this. All right, let's see if five does it. Five squirts. Yeah, let's go five and a half. All right, I'm going to leave that there. Come back to it in a second. Um, now, the, the question that may come up is, uh, um, this is this is fun to sip. I mean, it's very different for nerds like me, and, and I, I enjoy it very much. But for everyone else, um, you may you, you buy a bottle of this, and it's not cheap. I got this on, it was on the closeout shelf. So I got lucky, but for everyone else, you know, if you if you got a bottle of this, what the heck do you do with it, um, right? I mean, I mean, it's it's a little too wild, um, and too different to throw into a lot of traditional cocktails. You can build your own cocktails around it, but you know that's a, a pain in the butt and it takes some trial and effort, um, um, takes some experimentation. So what do you do? Here's a small suggestion before I go back to sipping this on its own. Uh, this is what it, something I was talking about. Oh, that was my microphone. Hello, microphone. Get out of my way. Uh, I'm not editing that out. I don't edit anything. Um, this is New Riff, uh, single barrel rye. I reviewed this before. This is a kind of, you know, more MGP than MGP style of rye. It's very green. Um, I like this very much, but I also couldn't uh, give it a particularly high score because I thought, you know, it needs a little extra dimension, a little extra depth to it. Um, yeah, very, very green. Um, very driven by the unmalted Mai, Rye character. Um, so asparagus, you know, Brussels sprouts, they're, they're all coming through. Um, and the palate. Very well made, but again, very green, and that's kind of most of what it's doing. It's kind of like a dance between, you know, kind of nice oaky character and the sort of green notes. Um, something like this, and this is true, I think, of a lot of those, those this sort of MGP rise, and MGP style rise, they need a little bit of extra dimension to them. Enter your bottle of Old Poltrero. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add um, a little bit of this 100% malted rye into my almost entirely unmalted rye. And um, quiets down the nose, which is, which is actually usually what happens when you mix spirits like, in, like this, like I'm doing. Um, I'm getting some, there's some herbaceous notes coming out now, but I'm getting a... a Beyond the herbaceousness, it's uh, I'm getting inter intermingling between the um, the, uh, the the greener notes and the sort of fruit eau de vie stuff. The if I left this a little while, the, I think the the eau de vie notes would start to come out a little bit more. But I'm not I'm not you know I'm not going to make you wait that long. Um, so I'm going to try this. And there's your extra dimension. Um, still, you know, we still got the Brussels sprouts there. Still got our little little hints of dill weed. Still have our sp spicy black pepper notes, our, our oaky notes in there. But now we're augmenting that with those lovely fruity characteristics, which are just playing all around the green notes in the background. Oh, that is good. This is much better than the sum of its parts. Um, and this is just me like messing around. I wasn't measuring or anything. I just 
pour the damp potrero in, the, in with, the, with the new riff. If someone wanted to do this more seriously, I'm sure they could do it better than I am right now. Um, this is a very good whiskey and uh, would make a hell of a Manhattan for that matter. I'm going to put it over here for, the, for a while. Back to my, um, back to my review. All right. Um, here we go. Old Potrero, uh, single barrel thing with water on the nose. A little melon comes out. Um, yeah, a little, well, no, more, more, um, um, Cantaloupe actually comes out than melon. More peppery, more um, more more more, uh, more confectioner's fudge. More cherry comes out. Really, more pepper though, and a little more of that sort of floral element in there. It develops nicely. Um, a lot of the same characteristics are there. It's just you get more spice. Um, you get more pepper and those sort of more confectionery elements from the oak. Uh, and you even get a little bit of, of like graininess in there. Like um, you're getting some porridge, but it's more like, you know, cherry eau de viste kind of porridge rather than, um... well, yeah, why wouldn't you put some kirsch and some pear brandy and some um, unaged Armagnac in your porridge? That sounds, that sounds like a wonderful, I, I should try that. Anyways, that's that's kind of what this smells like. Um, on the palate, oh, yeah. I mean, this what what this does, among other things, is it improves the finish and it improves the mouthfeel. This was already, you know. Had a big mouthfeel and was sort of going all over my mouth in the finish. This makes it um, much more complete. Uh, the water makes it much more complete, and even actually even a little bit dessert-like um, without actually being sweet. This is still sort of um, dry, but we're getting sweeter by spirit standards, if that makes sense. Oh, that is good. Um, um, more fudge, more of a smoky character too. We're getting a little bit of um, of an ashtray component coming that coming in. Um, uh, the the the, the Eau de recedes a little bit, so that the, the desserty characters can kind of come in, come in and take over, and the Eau de is really playing more in the background now. The oak wins this game in the end. Um, but it's so delicious that I don't really care. Um, yeah, same components as before with the oak kind of moving forward. There's some porridge um, and some like Balkan style tobacco, like um, like tobacco blends with, with a big heap of, of Latakia in them. That, uh, that's kind of coming through now. Um, very good, very different. Um, and a terrific option to, to just throw into your collection um, for, you know, sipping and, you know, thinking your, thinking your way through. This is very much something to kind of work on yourself with because the flavors are so different from any other whiskey you're, you're going to get out there. And, uh, you know, it makes a hell of a, of a uh, supplement to any rise you may have lying around. Actually, this... Hmm. So for those of you listening, I am listening to that blend between the new riff and the Potrero I made a, a, a second ago. I'm trying that again. And then it's had a second to, to, to uh, uh, settle down. This is now a dead ringer for um, the um, Alberta Premium Cast Strength, which I enjoyed very much. Um, this blend, that is dangerous. You could, you could, you know, uh, make many a terrific cocktail with this. Anyways, put that away. Um, this old Potrero on its own. Very good.
extremely good, extremely well made. You know, very different, but hasn't. But the oaky character, I think, is gonna is gonna win through a lot of of whiskey drinkers' palates. Um, something new and and something old. I would give this 86 out of 100. Um, if you can find it at a good price, I would say grab it. And um, yeah, that's kind of what I got. Thanks for watching. Hope this was uh, educational, or at least better than some reviews uh, that may be out there of of the uh, of this series. And um, with that, I'll cut this off. Thanks for watching, and cheers.